In our top story, the leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution has addressed the youth in Europe and North America in an open letter. Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei has urged people in the West not to consider recruited terrorists as representatives of Islam. The message of Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran. In the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful, to the youth in Europe and North America. The recent events in France and similar ones in some other Western countries have convinced me to directly talk to you about them. I am addressing you not because I overlook your parents, rather it is because the future of your nations and countries will be in your hands. And also I find that the sense of quest for truth is more vigorous and attentive in your hearts. I do not address your politicians and statesmen either in this writing because I believe that they have consciously separated the root of politics from the path of righteousness and truth. I would like to talk to you about Islam, particularly the image that is presented to you as Islam. Many attempts have been made over the past two decades almost since the disintegration of the Soviet Union, to place this great religion in the seat of a horrifying enemy. The provocation of a feeling of horror and hatred and its utilization has unfortunately a long record in the political history of the West. Here I do not want to deal with the different phobias with which the Western nations have thus far been indoctrinated. A cursory review of recent critical studies of history would bring home to you the fact that the Western government's insincere and hypocritical treatment of other nations and cultures has been censured in new historiographies. The histories of the United States and Europe are ashamed of slavery, embarrassed by the colonial period, and chagrined at the oppression of people of color and non-Christians. Your researchers and historians are deeply ashamed of the bloodsheds wrought in the name of religion between the Catholics and Protestants, or in the name of nationality and ethnicity during the First and Second World Wars. This approach is admirable. By mentioning a fraction of this long list, I do not want to reproach history. Rather, I would like you to ask your intellectuals as to why the public conscience in the West awakens and comes to its senses after a delay of several decades or centuries. Why should the revision of collective conscience apply to the distant past and not to the current problems? Why is it that attempts are made to prevent public awareness regarding an important issue such as the treatment of Islamic culture and thought? You know well that humiliation and spreading hatred and illusionary fear of the other have been the common base of all those oppressive profiteers. Now I would like you to ask yourself why the old policy of spreading phobia and hatred has targeted Islam and Muslims with an unprecedented intensity. Why does the power structure in the world want Islamic thought to be marginalized and remain latent? What concepts and values in Islam disturb the programs of the superpowers? And what interests are safeguarded in the shadow of distorting the image of Islam? Hence, my first request is study and research the incentives behind Behind this widespread tarnishing of the image of Islam. My second request is that in reaction to the flood of prejudgments and disinformation campaigns, try to gain a direct and first-hand knowledge of this religion. The right logic requires that you understand the nature and essence of what they are frightening you about and want you to keep away from. I do not insist that you accept my reading or any other reading of Islam. What I want to say is, do not allow this dynamic and effective reality in today's world to be introduced to you through resentment and prejudices. Do not allow them to hypocritically introduce their own recruited terrorists as representatives of Islam. Receive knowledge of Islam from its primary and original sources. Gain information about Islam through the Quran and the life of its great prophet. I would like to ask you whether you have directly read the Quran of the Muslims. Have you studied the teachings of the prophet of Islam and his humane ethical doctrines? Have you ever received the message of Islam from any sources other than the media? Have you ever asked yourself how and on the basis of which values has Islam established the greatest scientific and intellectual civilization of the world and raised the most distinguished scientists and intellectuals throughout several centuries. I would like you not to allow the derogatory and offensive image buildings to create an emotional gulf between you and the reality, taking away the possibility of an impartial judgment from you. Today the communication media have removed the geographical borders. Hence, do not allow them to besiege you with fabricated and mental borders. Although no one can individually fill the created gaps, each one of you can construct a bridge of thought and fairness over the gaps to illuminate yourself and your surrounding environment. While this pre-planned challenge between Islam and you, the youth, is undesirable, 
It can raise new questions in your curious and inquiring minds. Attempts to find answers to these questions will provide you with an appropriate opportunity to discover new truths. Therefore, do not miss the opportunity to gain proper, correct and unbiased understanding of Islam so that hopefully, due to your sense of responsibility toward the truth, future generations will drive the history of this current interaction between Islam and the West with a clearer conscience and lesser resentment. Well, to discuss this further, we're being joined by Imam Muhammad Ali Elahi. He's the director of the Islamic House of Wisdom, and he joins us via Skype from Michigan. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Imam Elahi. Now, it's a very carefully le le worded letter, uh, but it comes at a time when we are seeing this wave of Islamophobia within the West, specifically in Europe right now in the wake of those Shakli Abdo attacks. How significant do you think this letter is? Well, I think that... Uh this is the right message uh, from the right person and the right time and uh, for the right audience. Uh, we know that uh, building bridges of understanding, awareness, and uh, sharing this beautiful information that Ayatollah Khamenei mentioned uh, is very important for this time and for this generation. You see that Islamophobia, uh, definition of Islamophobia is phobia means irrational fear. It is not rational. And unfortunately, this is a disease that it is hurting Islam, hurting Muslims, and even hurting the America, hurting the uh, Western world. We know that Islamophobia is not about Islam, it is not about Muslim, it is about power, it's about money, it's about domination. And unfortunately, uh, people uh, get uh, confused because of ignorance and lack of understanding of the Islam. And what the message says that the best reference to realize the uh, truth about teachings of Islam is the Holy Quran, exactly that's the answer. This is a book that talks about science, al-ilm, 750 times in the Qur'an. The issue of science that is the source of a civilization. And this is the same book uh, when it talks about the qualities of the Creator, about God. Out of that, almost 100 qualities, the quality of ar-Rahman, ar rahmaniya that God is merciful and He is Khayrul Rahimin, He is Arhamul Rahimin, uh, the most compassionate, the most merciful. This quality is mentioned in the Quran more than 600 times. Indeed. Now, so, Imam Elahi, uh, we're quickly running out of time. Um, when you look at this letter and read it, it's quite clear that the underlying theme here is that Ayatollah Khamenei is telling the youth in the West to think for themselves when it comes to Islam and Islamophobia. Now, why do you think, as Ayatollah Khamenei also alluded in that letter, is the West, the leaders there and the politicians and institutions deliberately trying to create this phobia against Islam? Well, because it is a business, the business of war, the, the business of targeting the, the wealth of the Muslim world. And in reality, we know that those people, those extremists and politicians in the West, one example was just last Friday, the Duke University, that they received even death threat for if they air the Adhan from the chapel of the university and the university officials, they, they cancel that. So we see this hypocrisy that even this Dr. Uh, Karen Armstrong mentioned that how come when the school in Pakistan with 165 students, they were killed by Taliban, by Al-Qaeda terrorists, we didn't see this uh, demonstration and solidarity and sympathy 
in, in France and other parts of the world. So we see this, uh, unfortunately, hypocrisy. And this is by those people that they are targeting the real Muslim. They are not anti-ISIS, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, because no, we know these are just, just names that they are using every t time for, for political reason. So if they really were against terrorism, against ISIS, why they don't go and in reality and seriously fighting with them? Why they are attacking us as Muslims and why they are attacking the teachings of Islam? So I think this message was to show the hypocrisy, the double standard, and this darkness and this irrational uh, fear of Islam. And as the Quran says, If you don't know it, go and ask people who have this knowledge. Don't go to the media or those people who already are enemies of Islam and hate the, the Quran and ask them about Islam. So this right. ignorance should be removed. And I'm very glad that the Pope talked about it, the letter that the former Iranian President Khatami sent to United Nations uh, uh, Secretary General. And now this mighty message from Ayatollah Khamenei, I think these are, this is the kind of information that we need to share, and especially the audience of the youth, because they are the ones who are confused. They are the ones who are abused now in this a terrorist organization, they brainwash or they were taken advantage. And, and I think that uh, it is a time that we continue to work on this path of uh, promoting dialogue, promoting right. more conversation. And, and bringing the communities together, the youth together. Indeed, I'm going to have to stop you there, Imam Elahi. Unfortunately, time's gotten the better of us. That was Imam Muhammad El Ali Elahi, Director of Islamic House of Wisdom, joining us via Skype from Michigan. It's always a pleasure talking to you on Press TV.